Want to boost your investment skills? Hungry for financial growth? Well, you're in the right place. Investing is a journey, and like every journey, it begins with a simple step. That step is understanding the importance of investment strategies. Imagine trying to navigate a bustling city without a map. That's what investing with no strategy is like. Yet, with a well-thought-out strategy, you can chart the course of your financial journey and steer it towards your goals. This video will be your compass, providing a step-by-step -step guide to investment strategies tailored for beginners. We'll start by helping you understand your financial goals, then delve into different types of investments. We'll help you choose the right investment and build your portfolio. So, if you're ready to navigate the bustling city of investing, let's grab that compass and map and get ready to explore. Ready to dive into the world of investing? Let's get started. The first step in any journey is knowing where you want to go. And the journey to financial freedom is no different. Financial goals, you see, are the destinations that guide us on our investment journey. Without a clear idea of where we're headed, we might end up wandering aimlessly, losing precious time and resources along the way. The beauty of setting financial goals is that they provide a roadmap to our dreams. Whether it's buying a home, starting a business or simply securing a comfortable retirement, our financial goals are the milestones that mark our progress towards these dreams. But not all financial goals are created equal. They can be broadly categorized into three types, short-term, medium-term and long-term. Short-term goals are those we aim to achieve within a year or two. Maybe it's a dream vacation, a new gadget or paying off a chunk of credit card debt. These goals usually require less money and can be achieved relatively quickly. Medium-term goals, on the other hand, are those we aim to achieve within five to ten years. This could be saving for a down payment on a house, funding your child's education, or perhaps starting your own business. These goals require more planning and saving and may involve taking on a bit more risk in your investment strategy. Long-term goals are the big ones. These are the goals we aim to achieve in ten years or more. It could be a comfortable retirement, leaving a legacy for your children, or maybe even becoming financially independent. These goals require a lot of patience, discipline and wise investment decisions. You see, understanding your financial goals isn't just about setting targets. It's about knowing what you value and what you're willing to do to achieve it. It's about creating a roadmap that will guide your investment decisions and help you make the most of your hard-earned money. Now that you have your goals in mind, let's move on to understanding the different types of investments. There are various avenues where you can put your money to work. Let's dive into the world of investments. Picture a bustling marketplace filled with opportunities, each with its own potential for profit and risk. One of the most common types, and perhaps the most well-known, are stocks. When you buy a stock, you're essentially buying a piece of a company. It's like owning a slice of a giant pie. The size of your slice may be small, but as the company grows, so does your piece. However, stocks can be volatile, and there's always a risk that the value of your slice could decrease. Now, let's shift our focus to bonds. Bonds are like IOUs. When you buy a bond, you're lending your money to an entity, maybe a corporation or a government. In return, they promise to pay you back with interest over a specified period of time. Bonds are generally considered less risky than stocks, but the potential returns are also usually lower. Next up, mutual funds. Imagine a basket filled with a mix of stocks, bonds and other investments. That's what a mutual fund is. It's managed by professionals who decide what to include in the basket. This allows you to diversify your investments, which can help spread out risk. However, mutual funds often come with management fees, which can eat into your returns. Lastly, we have real estate. This involves buying property, either to rent out for a steady income or to sell later at a higher price. Real estate can provide a good hedge against inflation but it also requires more management and maintenance compared to other investments. With these options in mind, it's time to understand how to choose the right investment for you. Remember, every investment comes with its own set of risks and potential returns. It's all about finding the right balance that aligns with your financial goals and risk tolerance. So let's continue our journey and explore how to make that choice. Investing is not a one-size-fits-all solution. 
Just like a bespoke suit, tailored to fit your specific measurements, your investment strategy should be customized to your unique circumstances, financial goals and risk tolerance. Let's start with risk tolerance. Think of it as your financial pain threshold. If the market takes a nosedive, how much loss can you stomach before you start to panic? Are you a daredevil, ready to ride the roller coaster of high-risk, high-return investments? Or are you more of a safety-first investor, preferring the slow and steady growth of low-risk options? Understanding your risk tolerance is crucial because it helps you avoid investments that might cause you sleepless nights. Next, consider your investment horizon. That's just a fancy way of saying how long you plan to invest before you need to withdraw your money. If you're saving for a down payment on a house in five years, you'll want a different investment strategy than if you're saving for retirement in 30 years. Longer investment horizons typically allow for more aggressive, higher risk investments because you have more time to recover from potential losses. And let's not forget your financial goals. Are you investing for wealth accumulation, retirement, buying a house or funding your kids' education? Each goal may require a different investment strategy. For instance, saving for retirement might involve a mix of stocks and bonds, while saving for a house might lean more towards safer, short-term investments. Now, let's talk about diversification. It's the investment equivalent of not putting all your eggs in one basket. By spreading your investments across a variety of asset classes, you reduce the risk of a single investment dragging down your entire portfolio. Diversification won't guarantee profits or protect against loss, but it can help you achieve a more stable and predictable return on your investments. Now that you know how to choose your investments, let's talk about building your portfolio. With the right combination of risk tolerance, investment horizon, financial goals and diversification, you'll be well on your way to creating a robust investment strategy tailored just for you. Building a portfolio is like assembling a jigsaw puzzle. Imagine each piece representing a different type of investment, be it stocks, bonds, real estate, or even commodities. Each piece on its own might not make much sense, but when they come together, they form a coherent, complete picture. That's what we're aiming for when we build an investment portfolio. So how do we select these pieces, these investments? It all starts with understanding your financial goals and risk tolerance. Are you saving up for a house, planning for retirement, or perhaps you're just looking to grow your wealth? Each goal may require a different mix of investments. For example, if you're young and saving for retirement, you might be able to tolerate higher risk in exchange for potentially higher returns. This might lead you to put a larger portion of your portfolio in stocks. On the other hand, if you're nearing retirement, you might prefer safer, more stable investments, leading you to allocate more towards bonds. But the process doesn't stop after you've selected your mix of assets. The financial markets are constantly changing and so too might your financial goals and risk tolerance. That's why it's important to regularly review and rebalance your portfolio. Reviewing your portfolio involves checking if your investments are still aligned with your goals. Are your high-risk investments performing well? Are your safe investments indeed safe? If not, it might be time to make some adjustments. Rebalancing, then, is the process of making those adjustments. It involves selling off investments that no longer fit your goals and buying new ones that do. It's a way to ensure that your portfolio continues to reflect your financial goals and risk tolerance. Remember, building a portfolio is not a one-time event, but a continuous process. It's about assembling the right pieces, keeping an eye on them, and making adjustments when necessary. It's a journey, not a destination. And like any journey, there will be ups and downs. But with patience, diligence, and a bit of savvy, you can navigate these waters and achieve your financial goals. With these steps, you are well on your way to becoming a savvy investor. Investing may seem daunting, but with these strategies, you're ready to take the plunge. Let's take a moment to recap what we've covered today. We've explored how to understand your financial goals. Remember, it's all about knowing what you're investing for. We've also delved into the various types of investments available to you, from stocks and bonds to real estate and mutual funds. We discussed how to choose the right investment, keeping in mind your risk tolerance and time horizon. 
And finally, we touched on building your investment portfolio, stressing the importance of diversification and regular reviews. Remember, investing is a journey, not a destination. It's a continuous process of learning, adjusting and growing. So don't stop here. Keep exploring, keep asking questions and most importantly, keep investing. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more investment tips. Happy investing.